I'm Matthew Plummer Fernandez. I'm based in the UK. I'm a computational artist and I'm also a course director of computational arts at UAL. I've come to Art Basel this year to participate in the Tezos talks, also to look around and get a feel for what sort of art is being showcased this year at, at Art Basel. The topic of the talk that I'm participating in is about the Tezos art community, uh, which to me is an integral part of uh, the Tezos uh, experience in terms of NFTs, it's really about community. I've been producing work on the Tezos blockchain for over a year now and I've experimented with different marketplaces, uh, mainly on Hikeknuk but now uh, also on FXHash and Object.com and um, I really like the sort of interconnected marketplace system within Tezos. So I came to Tezos specifically uh, Rather intuitively, I just felt like it was the sort of ecosystem and the technology that most aligned with my values and principles as an artist. Uh, it was new, it was exciting, uh, and so there was this kind of creative energy being part of that. You know, everyone had something to bring to it. It wasn't something that was set in stone. We were sort of defining it together, and I, and I sort of really valued from the beginning that sort of grassroots approach to producing NFTs. Before coming to NFTs and the Tesla blockchain, I was, I've been an artist for about 10 years. I've worked a lot in uh, new technologies and new software. Um, so I've been always excited about new technologies that aren't just an artistic medium, but are also questioning values in society and sometimes creating controversies around their usage. And I feel like artists are particularly well positioned to discuss and intervene in those conversations. And so a lot of my work has been around the use of algorithms in everyday life and culture, 3D printing, digital fabrication, and blockchain technology felt like a kind of an extension of that conversation. So what's different about creating work on the blockchain, um, uh, in my previous work, I worked a lot with both kind of digital and physical formats. And it's interesting how the physical format was usually seen as the artwork, so collectors would buy the physical artwork without really appreciating the sort of digital file that was used to create it. Whereas for myself, it always felt like the digital was the original. It was the thing that um, was the blueprint for the, the sort of physical to manifest. And it's interesting how with the blockchain that relationship is reversed so that the sort of digital blueprint of an artwork is what's valued. It's kind of uh, what safeguards the artwork. It can be sort of um, embedded um, on, on a file sharing system that is, um, yeah, that the NFT points to, or there's now on-chain uh, NFTs as well. So you can kind of embed or engrave your, your, your file into the blockchain itself. So I really, appreciate this new relationship with the, the artwork and the sort of appreciation of the, the digitalness of the artwork. One thing that I find quite interesting about the marketplace is that, is that we kind of replicate very similar ideas around ownership so that we have this kind of like there's one owner to one artwork or the sort of distribution of funds is very much like you buy an artwork and it, that money goes directly to the artist which is great. But what's really interesting is finding new forms of contracts that might distribute those funds equally. Uh, so I'd like to give a shout out to Kahlo who organized a thing called Blind Gallery. And Blind Gallery was an experiment in anonymizing who the artists were behind a drop so that um, collectors could sort of guess or just buy art because they, they actually liked it rather than thinking about its uh, final evaluation. Um, and what was interesting was the, the sort of funding model, all, all the sales were distributed equally to all the artists and I feel like this is something that artists can experiment with a lot more and the marketplace could exp uh, experiment with a lot more, you know, this, these different relationships between the marketplace and how it distributes its, its earnings to artists and, and thinking about creating a kind of more equal, safe environment for artists to participate in. So I think what's exciting about being in this space is that it is so dynamic. There's every month some sort of new idea or new concept, a new marketplace, a new dynamic for distributing artwork. And artists on the Tezos 
in the Tesla's ecosystem are sort of uniquely empowered to be part of that conversation, you know, because it started as this very much a grassroots movement. You're there sort of influencing ideas, you're coming up with little ideas that sort of catch on. Um, and I think artists are not just being creative with their own work, they're being creative with the medium itself, which is kind of a fascinating relationship to have with the medium, you know, it's it's not fixed, it, it can kind of evolve into something else and we're not quite sure what, what that final evolution will look like, you know, maybe it'll never sort of stop, maybe blockchain will enable new configurations and, and new dynamics to, to always be part of the artwork and be part of what the artist does. So one of the interesting things, seeing that Tezos has been selected as a partner for Art Basel, just shows that I guess to people that have been in art for a long time, you have this kind of intuitive understanding of where things are going perhaps. The Tezos community and its platform and the technology behind it aligns to a set of principles and values that are sort of universal. We, you know, we want to have fair, distributed, accessible space for, for art. We want it to not have this kind of environmental impact anymore. And, and so I kind of feel like it's, it's just a sort of natural progression of where things are going within that. And I'm positive about how things are going, even though, you know, again, there's always uh, challenges ahead, but somehow those challenges are constantly being ironed out and sussed out. And even the Tezos ecosystem itself is being asked to sort of rethink its position within arts and how it can contribute to the history of art. Thank you.